Hello and welcome everyone to another guide playthrough of Heroes of Mad and Magic 3, the Jeebus Cross, okay? So we're playing the template Jeebus Cross, a randomly generated map, and we'll be playing with Tower. And as I'm playing the game, I'll be talking through what you should be looking out for, and I'll be explaining my entire thought process which leads into me taking certain decisions that I make. We'll be playing throughout the first week, um, so that should be including the break, perhaps the turn in the desert as well. Um, I hope you learn. I hope you learn a lot from this one. So let's go and jump into a game. We go new game. We do single scenario and we do random map Jibus Cross. And um, when playing Tower, you're gonna be basically choosing a secondary uh, bonus. Okay, none of the Tower heroes are exceptionally good. Um, Josephine will provide your kingdom with some extra golems from the very start. Pretty good at tanking things. Um, is one of the best heroes to take uh, lots of fights early on. Next up is you have the Ain as an option. She is a scholar with a gold specialty as well. So apart from extra gold income, you're also going to be getting scholar, with which you'll be able to collect all the spells from your heroes and then redistribute them back over to them. Um, pretty solid option. And next up is also the Solmir. Solmir is a pretty good main hero, he has Chain Lightning, he can open up some road fight if your road is blocked by ranged creatures for example. A pretty solid option. These days the most popular option is the Solmir in fact. Um, a little back in, I mean like a year ago, it used to be something like Josephine instead. Um, but still, Solmir in this case. Um, online matches are played at 160% difficulty for the most part. And they usually do the time trade too, but in our case, we don't need to do any time trading since we are playing versus the AI. So we're gonna be having a 10,000 gold start. We play with a chest timer of 16, 8, 2. A pretty common timer in the lobby. The timer is comprised of uh, three numbers the starting timer, so we start up with 60 minutes. Every single new turn, we get 8 minutes, and then for every single individual battle, we get 2 minutes each. That is a timer that's longer than what I prefer. I usually would be playing 12, 6, 2, but in our case, uh, the extra timer will help us, uh, will help me explain everything that I do over to you guys. So without further ado, let's start our starting boat. Let's choose our starting bonus, which is gonna be the artifact, and let's go. Do keep in mind that I'm a little bit sick right now, so you know, if I cough a little, then do excuse me. We're gonna be playing any map that we generate, we'll not be using any resource whatsoever. We are good enough to per persevere in any sort of environment. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to be buying out the hero that's going to be having your army. Then this is going to be our starting tower army. Sometimes you get even more from the other hero, but not getting it is okay. And then the first thing you want to do is scout. Um, in our case, we are pretty lucky because we end up rolling on Redwood Observatory immediately right next to us. Which will, which will let us see a lot of our situation. So first off, we see immediately our break. It is Black Dragons, a not easy break. We will have to brawl them down. If we want to brawl them down on a mage, we we'll, we'll likely want to find Resurrection in order to be able to do so. But more likely, we will instead want to probably main a Might Hero, so we are better at brawling them. Usually in Jeebus Cross, the entire tempo and the how fast you can get going revolves around lamps. Uh, these lamps that let you recruit 4 to 7 Master Genies immediately. And that can be a really, really powerful force for you early on. So we're looking for those. We already have one, and that's already really, really good. The moment that we get it, we will be tremendously more powerful. The um, chest ends up being an artifact, which is not very lucky. And also, the conservatory is minimum. This means that this is not a very hard object to take and will be very, very valuable for us in this game. We found the Shiva. Shiva's a barbarian. As a barbarian, she would be a very good might hero for us to potentially main. Ooh. We have two out of three pieces for the wiz as well. Mr. Copper mana as well as the Tasman mana. We are only missing the Charmer mana for the entire Ati. I don't think we see one on the road, but that's something to look out for. Uh, but honestly, getting these artists is less is worse than gold, since we kind of need gold in order to get going here. So, let's see. We are able to... Um, this is gonna be a level 10 hero. Wolf Raiders are not really hard to deal with, but are really rewarding, considering how hard they are. 
and I don't think Solmir should be main this game considering what the break is. So I'll be using the Solmir on turn 1 with his Chain Lightning to clear the Wolf Raider Picket. I mean, not Wolf Raider Picket, rather the Wolf Raider Prison. Oh, our starting army is a task when I'm to you. Wow, okay. Uh, this makes the find of the RT um, even worse, but so be it. We have the extra golems from the Josephine, so we have a lot of meat to tank for us. Apart from that, we'll also want to use some monsters. so this is the army composition for the sake of, of fighting TX units. There's no reason to pick up the other gargoyle, because they would probably die in a single hit anyway. And if they are, if, if there's going to be a full stack dying of gargoyles every single time we get hit, it may as well be one gargoyle instead of possibly eight. So there we go. We're going to be blasting through the prison over here. And we'll be receiving a level 10 hero from it. I can tell it's level 10 based on the um, guard size. If it was less wolfies, it would be level 5. If it was... And no, a uh, level 20 prison cannot be guarded by wolfies. They are just too low value for that to happen, unless they were guarded alongside... No, 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 actually no, just not enough value. Yet. So without too much trouble, we were able to take these out. And then we get a prison of a level 10 Sorug. That is not so good. We have offense on a hero, but her my st her stats are kind of all over the place. They're gonna be like kind of hard to use. She is not the hero that we want to main, but she's gonna be a decent hero for us through this game, nonetheless. So there we go. We're able to take these back to civilization. And if I were to have some spells to cast on her, then I feel like I could do some decent things. Uh, the hardest fight in the early game to take is going to be the Harpy Hives over here. But the moment that we take them, we'll be getting some Master Genies as well as a Giant from the Cloud Temple. Which is also very, very important. So with that in mind, we want to be finding ways to do the fight. There probably is a way to do the church right immediately on um, Tower with some pattern. But then again, we will not be going too in-depth into pattern using. We'll just be fighting the... Um, Fights uh, the way that we see fit as we go. Playing the road over here seems to be like a pretty obvious choice to be made. So far we are locking in Shiva as the main hero. But this doesn't have to be the case, you know? If we find something better down the line, then we would be willing to make the transition from one hero into the other. And we're still looking to utilize Sorug as well. Yeah, Bron and Roshka. Bron is a pretty good might hero. And we also farm Fafnir. With Fafnir, we'll be able to transfer some spells over to Sorug, so she's gonna be better for the sake of taking the Harpy Hack fight here, potentially. Bron could take the treasures down there. Or we could push him over in this road. I don't think I'll be getting another hero this turn. And that's okay. A 7 hero start will deal. What I want to do now is I'll is I want to take the side army and want to push it towards the side town. The way the Jeebus Cross Biome is structured is you're going to be having a town and two, I mean, your main town, two side towns, and also a break. So we see the road to break, that means the other two roads must lead into the side towns. So we'll be getting one of the towns with Braum by using the side army. The towns can be guarded by a low amount of creatures or cannot be guarded. It can be unguarded, is what I mean. And, you know, we're just gonna be preparing to the best of our ability to deal with most of these situations. We're pushing Sorg forward, and I also want Shiva to take some of the fights like this. The ground fight over here is gonna let, let me take the Treacherous stuff for some experience and the Melito Tower for some stats. That's gonna be pretty useful to, for the sake of building my hero. Um, 500 gold, uh, 500 XP is not a lot at all. In this case, I will take the gold, since gold is like still a pretty relevant thing for me to look for. And we can start chaining a little bit more of here as well. So there we go, that's our first turn. Uh, we have a slight plan. We would really love to do the um, Harpy Eyes on day one. If I had the, in uh, the genius from the lamp as well as the giant, I could then do the tier 1 conservatory. And then with Genies, Giant, Angel, as well as the Ground Pulse stack, we'd be able to do the blocks over here that could lead into other things. 
By that point, we'd be snowballing and we could do most of the objectives that we were to find in our biome. That would be really good. But then again, preparing for the Hoppy Hack fight is gonna be... Um, it's gonna be not as straightforward as you might think. So we pass the turn and move on to the next one. First of all, we want to be scouting out more. You know, like in, card uh, like in card games, you draw first and then make your decisions on what you want to do. Otherwise, order low. So yeah, and we should be able to reach the town on the next turn already. We also see two out of three pieces for the sake of the elixir of life, which is potentially somewhat um, interesting. If we were to be able to receive that, then tanking the um, black dragons for the sake of the break is going to be like far, far easier. So let us see. I don't want to move the gerwolf yet. I want to move the shiva a little bit. We should receive this. And should, we should also transfer the army using the Gerwolf instead. We can hop on the road. Trading on roads costs less uh, moon points, so we should do that. And now I think, if I were to take everything onto Sorog, including the meat, including the new spells, then we will be able to do the fight. Despite it being pretty hard. We can also grab the extra golden steel. With that, I need a tiny bit of gold. Mm, which we are actually not easily able to collect. But that's okay. Oh yeah. We will be taking the stronghold meat as well, because the fight is hard, and we want as much uh, potential to be tanking things as well. We can take the army onto Josephine. Then we can take everything onto Sorug. Sorug having 4-4 my stats, um, having some spells, having some offense, is gonna be the best hero for the sake of tanking that fight. Then with composition like this, we should be able to we should be good to go. We have plenty of meat to tank for us. And we have a pretty good amount of damage too. So there we go. Even auto combat is able to defeat this fight, and we should of course be able to do even a better job than the auto combat. By hasting, I would be able to shoot one of them before they end up moving. I don't really have a much better option for the sake of my cast. So I may as well go through with this. We can now set up a Bastion for our uh, Gremlins and keep shooting. We could potentially look to um, hit them with some of the units as well. But that's not something that we're very interested in doing. We're gonna be using as well. So we shoot first on the next turn. Not first, but second. Still, we managed to hit the 14 stack. First, because of this. We can rehaze because they're gonna be starting a new turn, unless I do. The 7 stack is gonna be moving first. For now, we'll defend for another turn. Now, they'll start blocking me, but then by now, we can just punch them down. And then shoot them down. There we go, and now we have access to the genie lamp. However, it's a problem because we don't have any gold in order to use it. So I'll push my Josephine in, the in a more northern part of the map in search of some gold. We have some near the road over here. Ooh, we have a Pendant of Courage. Uh, taking the fight against the Earth Elementals because they have a lot of HP, it's gonna be lots of XP for me as well. And we found the Charm of Mana! This means that we currently have Wizard's Well in this biome, which is very unique, I would say. You don't usually get this. Mm. But then again, it's not a very super powerful RT, but it's going to make um, a lot of the things way more convenient. Right now, a helmet would be good. Then again, a helmet of plus one power is not that influential. And I currently, I don't really have a lot of casting whatsoever. Maybe I should be made the Soul Mirror because of the Wiz as well. But then again, that's not a very interesting choice. We can collect the gold. 
Are we able to collect any more gold? Yes, we are. Uh, we can head over here, collect some spells, collect some resources, and most importantly, gold. Five genies to be bought here. We can buy them out immediately. And now after buffing, after super buffing my gremlins, we will be able to take out the giants without any problems. Yes, we'll be able to two-shot them. <coughs> Not slightly annoying, but should be fine. Oh yeah, okay, we do enough damage. Now, we cannot pick up the giant yet, because we don't have enough gold. And also, right now I should be setting up for some of the objectives to be found on the heroes. I want to do the treasury, that's the, a decent amount of XP, and also the conservatory is also a pretty good amount of X XP. We want to be doing these objectives as soon as possible, that will lead into the uh, Pandora box here being farmed as well. But we also are kind of considering not maining the Shiva, because the wizard's well enables us to main a mage with a way higher efficiency. But then again, uh, the soul rig is kind of ruined with two bad skills. Interference is not a bad skill, but it's useless in the early game and it does nothing for us currently. And Ballistics is, of course, is a pretty useless skill for most of the game. So right now we have to make some choices. I would say that getting the Angel is a pretty big priority. And we also might still want to invest a little bit into Solmare. Best case scenario is we would be able to cast Expert Resurrection in some sort of way. But then again, we're missing the spell, we're missing the earth magics, and we're missing the mana to ever cast them. So, yeah. It would still take me quite a few steps in order to be able to do so. So the current following objectives of what I want to do is the conservatory, the treasury, the Pandora box. Then I also want to complete the wizard's well. I want to take the pendant of courage. And I think that the army for this game is going to be giants. We can build the giants in the main then we can also um, double it up with the Cloud Temple, and we can then also farm the TX Pumble shops that we have in the Sovereign part of the map. So G uh, Giants will be the main bulk of the army that will be carrying me throughout the match. So with that in mind, Shiva will do, Shiva will do. Even if I cannot make too good of a use of the Wiz as well. So I'll make sure be heading out to help Shiva as well. We will be assembling the um, woods as well a little bit later, since there's no rush for it, and it's very important that my Josephine scouts the map as well as collects gold for us. Yes, as well as collects a lot of gold for us. Very important. We're able to find another conservatory, meaning that we will be able to get even more angels. We should also push the road on the brawn. We also saw another lamb, but with a village guard, we are not that interested in it. We also found another lamp, okay. So it seems like we have quite a few Master Genies available here too. We do have some options. This armor is unguarded, meaning that the army being here is kind of a waste. But then again, better safe than sorry. What? Oh, right. wait, no? That moment should have... I had 150 left, and then I took it. And then it cost me more than it should have. Okay, well, it'll do, it'll do. We can take this down next turn. We can recruit the giant now. And the Jerbolf will be able to deliver the army over to my Shiva, who will then claim the conservatory. That's gonna be the angel, that's gonna be some speed for me. A really good object for me to take. We should be surrounding the um, Master Gremlins with the Stone Golem as well as the giant. Apart from that, we will have uh, Master Gun uh, one size that will be able to buff me as well. And like this, we should be pretty good in this fight. I don't want get to get hit by the right side stacks in the first turn. So instead, we'll be going over to the left side of the battlefield in order to avoid them. And also we can hit here. This morale is really unfortunate and pretty bad for us. The first act to move is gonna be this one. And we can't really do much about that. We end up getting a little bit of nerf. 
Not too exciting. We are perhaps going to be able to bait them backwards instead of moving forwards. We cannot really hit with the giant, so we'll be waiting instead. We'll be able to set up a position where we can guard our gremlins from getting hit. Giants have more speed, so we'll be able to get back in a pretty good spot. We're very likely to kill this right now, if you're worth the hit it. So that's exactly what we'll do. A Master Genie has 1 HP, so it's not very long for this world. And also, the bait here was successful. We were able to get these two stacks to move in a pretty good uh, direction, at least from our perspective. Yes, the Master Genie died, and then we can perhaps still keep baiting these two. Because they seem very susceptible. Nope. Unfortunately, they ended up moraling, which is pretty painful. One of them is still getting Kaiden. Oh, um, by the way, sometimes the AI actually knows it's gonna morale and makes moves based on that. I think this is one of those cases. It's pretty weird. If they weren't gonna morale, they weren't gonna go there. At least I've seen some examples of that. We don't really want Talk Tree here. We want to level up the other, more important skills. Right now, I think that I should not be using the Angel, because using the Angel is gonna let, lead me to be suffering through the terrain penalty, which currently would be a very unideal. The shop is not big, it's gonna be a pretty easy take for the Shiva. Gonna be some experience gained. Don't wanna get a hit. With Bluss, we'll be one-shotting, and the giant can just roll for now. Then, with, while suffering the least amount of turn penalty, we can take the um, Angel, and now we can actually do the fight over here. But we shouldn't do it on this turn, we should do it on next turn, because right now we can make ourselves faster for the new turn, and that will be saving me more moves in the long run. <coughs> because remember, the faster the slowest unit in the army, the faster off I'll be. And the difference between those units is like pretty big, substantial. We suddenly found a whole new package of items. We have a lamp, a prison, and two hives uh, all next to each other. I feel like this should be where we should go. We found a really, really good hub of um, items together. Objectives together, not items. We also see a picket over there right now. So the way that we do this is we set up a hero to be reaching over to the Sanya, who will then be reaching over into the prison, and the prison hero will be able to help me out on the above the hives. Then with that many Viverns on the Shiva, we will then potentially be able to start farming the experimental workshops, putting our giant stack at a really high number. Right now in the main castle, we may as well build something like... Wait, oh yeah, we don't have the gems for the sake of the Altar of Wishes. So instead, we will be building a Mage Guild. It's gonna be useful eventually. That's a decent little Mage Guild. We're not really looking for slow here, so that option will do. There we go. We can still push on Josephine over into the side town. Hopefully it's gonna be takeable. Yes, it is takeable. No guard, meaning that we can pour mans here easily on our main hero, since eventually we will want to pick up the conservatory. But we'll see how it goes. For now, the most important part is going to be to take the box on the Shiva. It is not a very easy fight, but it should be doable, and it should be really rewarding as well. We are hoping that this is going to be experience for the sake of building up the Shiva. We buff the Master Gremlins, hopefully with something useful. Frenzy is useful, but it's not too exciting on its own. Because we don't have a lot of defense, so we convert it into damage anyway.
I'll be placing the giant over here. We really do want to kill the magic elementals as soon as possible. The psychic elementals don't do a lot of damage to the stone golems and the giants because they are immune to magic spell, uh, to mind spell, to mind spells. So we are most worried about the magic elementals. That's a, those are two really, really good casts, and that's another good cast. That is amazing for us. We will hit this, and then we can start dealing with the psychic elementals too. That is very nice. Even if I move forward ahead, they will not be able to reach the Master Gremlin still. So that is okay. We can also hit here because we do not receive a lot of damage backwards. We're able to buff. Hmm, out about some. And we are able to buff. Then we can uh, hit this. And there's only one stack, the guns will be able to shoot them for free, and we'll be good to go. Oh wait, the boss is fire. Oh yeah, okay. I could've just said there. But, this will do. Uh, the air magics is not very desirable, so I'll be skipping them with the hopes of a better skill. 15,000 experience, so this is where Shiva becomes a monster. We grab the expert scouting. Ooh, we end up having the lock choice. Level six, your 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 mind hero, unless he rolled randomly for wisdom, is gonna be guaranteed the wisdom level up. I should probably make an in-depth guide of how the level ups work. So yes, it's actually a really lucky thing to catch a good skill alongside the wisdom level up. So there we go. Level eight is gonna be another school of magic level up because you're guaranteed a school of magic level up every four levels at least. So we got one at level four. And now, this is gonna be the next one. Hopefully, this one will be Earth. It is Fire. We don't want Fire on our Shiva. So now, we'll be getting a choice between two new skills, which is dangerous. We're hoping for Tactics, Armor, Earth, something like that. Tactics will do. Since we have a Black Dragon Break, being able to position against them is gonna be nice. Then level 12 is gonna be another School of Magic level up, but we don't get it quite yet. This is a decent hero, not like exceptional, but it's okay. It's gonna get the job done here. The next objective that I really wanna take is gonna be the Pendant of Courage. It is a really big, valuable item. By the way, my Shiva almost ended up rolling no attack level ups as a Barbarian. That is very weird and I've almost never seen it before. Mm, a little bit concerning, but not too much. Pendant of Courage is going to make uh, the fights uh, way easier for any hero that is ever going to take any. I kind of would consider taking an ammo card for the sake of this fight, but I think we'll be fine without it because the Shiva is already that strong of a hero. So let's go and take the fight. Frenzy. Anything that gives damage right now is gonna be pretty good. Uh, the way that you want to take fights uh, like this with your shooter stack is you want to be baiting them with your fast uh, flyers or just whatever fast units you end up having. Also, we don't shoot there because we have a very limited amount of shots. Eight on the gremlins. We make, we want to make sure that every shot counts. Mm, they're gonna be reaching the master genie. Oops. Actually, I will... I kind of want to tank for the Master Genie. Ah, but that's actually very... No, I will not tank for the Master Genie. I ended up, ended up wasting it. That's a shame. Oh no, he survived. What a legend. I'm gonna hit here and hit here. We might be able to bait some of these away. Um, I really, really want to get a Bless. We're pretty close to having all the spells except for Bless. <coughs> so, by that point, Bless would be guaranteed. We'll be rolling here with these creatures. They pile on the Angel. That's okay. No more casts on this stack. No more casts on this stack. 
we'll be looking to bait some of them away. Like, they should be chasing the angel because it is low HP. They actually see whether they're low HP or not, and they really... Um, they take that very heavily into their equation, whether they want to focus it or not. Right now, I feel like we should be running away. The Ballista will, will do a pretty good job at tanking them in the meantime. Mm, there we go. Sure. Some Murph action going on. Decent enough. We want to shoot some of the biggest stacks. I feel like that's going to be far more value for me. Then we can also just brawl here. There we go. We save the shots for some of the biggest stacks, as we originally said. Full HP, so we can take a hit here and can hit back. Then we want to be baiting them around still. Don't want to be taking damage unnecessarily. But I'm a little bit closer, so the shots are going to be accurate very soon. Oh, we can take the retail with the... Um, with the golem, so now the angel can join in on the fight. Wonderful. There's still like one big scary stack remaining. Hopefully we'll be able to deal with them pretty soon. We actually have one last shot that should probably go exactly there. So without any shots remaining, we'll have to um, take them the hard way. And now this hard way <coughs> is going to be including taking the retail with the giant. And the giant's pretty healthy, so that should probably work out pretty fine. On the new turn, we'll be able to take the turn with uh, the retail with the angel too. So, yeah. I don't know. We don't really want to block up the spaces to hit them. There we go. Um, at a loss of only three golems and a ballista, we were able to take the fight. Pretty cool. We get the choice between wisdom and uh, fire magic. So. Well done. Let us think about this. The fire magic, I mean, I don't have any school of magic, so, and but then again, fire magic is not going to end up relevant in this game. So instead, I'll take the wisdom. There we go. And now we want to be changing the army over to the other side of the map. As we originally planned, um, remember, we set up the hero uh, Solomir over here to chain the army over to the Sanya so then it can take the prism, who will then be able to farm both the hives. This will give us a good base of vibrants, um, which will then be able to do the shops for even more army. Also, I made a mistake. I should have left Shiva on a Master Genie so she's faster, because she is my main. Having speed on her is, of course, very valuable. To get a hero slot to be able to continue my chain, I can just put some uh, Josephine in the town. Seems pretty good. Yes, the chain connects, so we connect that. Uh, the high fights will probably kill most of my <clears throat> most of my gremlins, but then again, that is okay, because the gremlins, I would say, have already done their part this game. So even if, even if they die, it's not too bad of a loss. So let's go. We have Dependent of Courage. Air shield down. Unfortunately, no... Speed spells. Whoa! They're actually gonna die. Holy... Wait, I did not expect that. Seems like the AI had a very similar result. I went forward in order to test for morale. Not to die, but I guess I died. Huh. Okay. Air shield kind of helps here. Unfortunate cast, pretty useless. Hmm. A giant is a pretty um, big price to pay for this. Can get another hero slot by putting the zero inside. There we go. Um, can carry on. A level 10 hero, but for level 10 standards, she is pretty bad, I would say. 
Uh, the first thing that I should do should probably be the list of warriors for the sake of the lamp. The lamp will, ena will enable me to have even more army. No, actually no. Maybe the hive is better. Yeah, let's start off with the hives. Immediately. This is a very small loss. We shall accept this and then... Um, so here's how you uh, place yourselves with shooters in a hive, okay? Um, basically, uh, the first row in the fight is gonna be your two first stacks, then the second row is gonna be um, your three next stacks, and then the last row is gonna be the last two stacks. So, the left side of the second row is gonna be reaching the left side of the row one and row three. So if you place your shooters on three, they will be able to block your shooters while hitting some other things. So right now if I place it like this, the AI will probably want to block the Master Gremlins, but instead of blo attacking the Master Gremlins while blocking them, they will instead attack the Nulls, most likely, which would be a very preferable outcome. So with such a plan of mind, we can go into the hive and see how that goes. They do indeed block the shooters, but instead of um, attacking the Nulls, I guess they still attack the Master Gremlins. Um, the AI is uh, somewhat hard to read. But you know, there's some tendencies that you can go over, and sometimes you'll be successful off of them. Never too bad to try. We don't really mind losing the Master Gumblers here. We'll be transitioning into other types of army. We have our first Vibrants of the match. Goodbye, Lissa Warriors, we are not good enough. We'll leave a Master Genie on Kinkaria, so she's gonna be faster, and then we'll get our Sonia to continue forward. <coughs> the first thing we'll do is we'll get the Lizard Warriors. Mm, not entirely a very easy fight. They will first off shoot the Master Gremlins, which is good. There we go. Then by the next round, we'll be able to block all of them. I think that this um, unit is gonna be better, best off. Uh... So, oh yeah, here's what I can do. No, actually I can't do it. I'm considering dispelling the Vyverns. Because being frenzied is not something that I can accept right now. I would be taking too much damage. There we go. We can block these with the Serpent Fly, and then we can attack south. We got some luck, that's pretty good. The morale, that's pretty bad. We're not able to block all of them. The Lizard Warriors over here will be able to hit. Mm. We can block over here. They are focusing their damage all over the place. That is very good for us. We can continue fighting. Some more buffs towards the Lizard Warriors are, of course, very acceptable and very preferable. Continue fighting. Very good. Ah, uh, we lost two Master Genies and some meat. 99 of them, that's a very big roll. Uh, but this will allow us to get even more Master Genies, which should possibly be worth it. But that was hard, uh, but admittedly, the fight was harder than I thought it would be. We can now get the Altar of Wishes to progress our tower buildings. And like this, we will then be able to claim the other hive, which will give me a good enough pause stack to probably do the experimental workshops. We will be looking to poor man's the Shiva. The poor manning is to retreat into any fight, so I can then buy them out in the tavern instead. So I'll be able to buy her out um, in the main town so I can then run down over into the experimental workshop fights. Um, this awesome Shiva will be able to take the, uh, the golems on and then we can continue building our giant pause stack. I say continue but we actually lost our only giant so far. Um, so let's say we'll start rebuilding our giant pause stack. Let's go. The new turn begins. We begin this turn by taking the Ancient Lamp on the Sanya. This is six genies. That ends up being pretty lucky. I'm happy to see this. 
we first can... We can do the fight on uh, King Carrier. She is not a lot, but she's a little bit better. Oh, sorry, come on. So there we go. The Magi are not that easy. No, actually, it's only a pack of them. They're relatively easy. Hmm. Pre-Master Genius. No, no, no. No, please, no. Oh, God. Okay, okay. Not too bad. Frenzy is uh, not entirely a very preferable cast. I seem to get it quite a bit, though. Ooh, cool moral. 2 1, very acceptable. We want to split it, be splitting our grab of stone golems like this, because then they will be less afraid to hit them and more likely to hit them. I mean that we lose basically what we choose to lose. It's us a small hive again, putting us at 10 vibrants, which is not very exceptional, but will be a pretty good foundation for the fights to come. We can chain it back over to the road. We also have a um, Ring of the Wayfarer, which is a really cool artifact. Uh, very useful. For now, we should be looking for the closest fight to take, so I can then um, Pormans. Or, alternatively, I could be going for the Ancient Land and then into the Conservatory. That would also be a pretty good way to go. Either of these versions would you. So, I just have to make a choice of which one I want to go for. Okay. So, with reasoning such as the Aces could potentially just kill me. No, no, no. I... Hmm. I think I should go for the Aces after all. So... Ooh, okay. That is an extra reason to go for more Angel heavy playstyle. I'm not able to take that immediately, but that will add up eventually. Okay, after seeing that, I am going to be committing over into the other version. We, have the, we upgrade the Alter Wishes so we can pick up a few more Master Genius that we'll be adding to an already existing power stack, which is really good. Though we are only able to claim a few. Then we will be using the existing heroes just to chain through over into the Shiva. And then Shiva is going to be able to go ahead and set up for the conservatory. And as I'm setting up, I'm going to be getting another hero to claim the lamp instead for her. We should be moving little by little because we have scouting, meaning that we are able to find new things as well. Oh wait, wait, faster. Um, okay. We can split a little bit and we can go ahead and do the fight. Oh yeah, we have tactics too. So this side is going to be a breeze. But the Gargoyles could cover at least one of these stacks. No, not in the Master Genies, neither... Okay. I guess I'll just block all of them with the Master Genies instead. We don't want to hit here because um, taking Retail is uh, pretty expensive. Unfortunate cast. Fortune morale. Good. We ended up losing one Master Dini, but that is an acceptable amount of loss. Very cool. We did not um, do that on the Shiva though. Instead, we know that we have a hero over in the town after we took it. So now we get need to get that hero out and to actually use it. We also want to be starting to set up or to get a hero to go for the other conservatory. That one should be easy by the time I get there. So who is the most useless hero right now? Um, these heroes are not doing much at all. Kinkaria is kind of powerful, but it's going to be like pretty hard to use her. And I love her on the null. So because of that, I will delete her in order to get my Josephine out. Then I'm going to go past, and only then do I want to train. I leave the angel on her. Oh yeah, we have the woods as well. Wow, a combination artifact, a very cool one, but unfortunately it's not actually useful right now. Anyhow, 
Next turn, we are looking to collect the Ancient Lamb, get all the army over to Shiva. With all that, we should be able to do even a pretty nicely sized conservatory. And um, then that will lead into the other conservatory. That will lead into the other shots being fired. And that should lead into a pretty good break, even against the Black Dragons. Despite not really having the preferable school of magic and not having many my parties either. So, let's go. We are we should be collecting gold first on the side heroes in order to be able to buy out the master genies whenever we interact with the lamb. Say so once a demon horseshoe, doesn't matter to us. There's a lot of gold here, but that I'm not really able to collect. Solmere is not able to commit too much commit to too much of the gold either. Well actually I can take it a little bit. There we go. 5k is gonna be able to even afford seven of them, which is the maximum amount of it available. We get six. A pretty nicely sized uh, lamp. Very happy to see. Take everything onto the Shiva, and then the Shiva takes the fight into the conservatory. I will bait them in with the angel. I'll just let them hit the angel, to be honest. And that way, I'll be able to fight them immediately. We can take the retaliation off. And then we can just attack. We can take the retaliation off again, and then attack. <coughs> If I placed my angel um, higher than the master uh, than the master genies, I would have been able to prevent that um, guard goal loss. But so be it. Air magic, not really that interesting. And it's another minimum. The fact that we went all the way out here with Shiva for a minimum conservatory is slightly upsetting. But that's life, huh? Yeah, I don't think I can save it. Well, actually, I can save it. But, oh, okay. They morale a bunch, but it doesn't matter. So now we are at two angels on. We should be looking to chain the army down over into the other objectives, and we should be looking to set up Shiva for four months. For now, we'll leave her on a uh, gargoyle because she's gonna be poor manning anyway. Then we can get the army over to our Jerwolf, and we can also go past the Nyx Warriors. This will also allow me to pick up the Shield of Dawn Lords, which is not exceptional. It's not that good, but honestly, right now, it's gonna be fine. It's okay. I think I want to be hasting the Vyverns. Ooh, painful. Ooh, painful. Minus one. Could be worse, but then again. Yikes. Mm, Grandal's guarding another lamb, but since I'm suffering through the terrain penalty in order to go here on this uh, type of army, I don't think I can actually get this into the chain. This also looks to be not that early of a break, because the black ranks are not very abusable, and we're not that great at brawling quite yet. We have to get ourselves a little bit stronger. We can pour mans into the gogs right now. There seems to be no issue with that, and I don't really see a reason to delay it either. We go off. Well, actually, there was a reason to possibly delay it, and that would be gold. But I'm pretty sure I should be able to collect enough anyway. And then buying the Master Genie would also be a really big boost. For that, we need 300 more gold. So almost any single thing that can give me gold is gonna be good enough. Hmm. If I had, like, a single gremlin, then I could not suffer the terrain penalty and then take the treasure chest. But okay, this will do. This will let me make my Shiva fast. I also want to get her get her a spellbook, but currently I can't afford it. Actually, I have uh, two marketplaces. So let's just pick it up before I forget it. 
Then with this, I will then go ahead and farm the experimental workshop. Then I will push for the other experimental workshop. And after I get both of them, I think that will actually bring me to a level of power that I can brawl down the black dragons finally in order to go ahead and farm the desert. So there we go. A pretty nice intro game. Hopefully this is going to be doable. It's a tier 2. I think that's um pretty favorable size for me right now. So I'm happy to see this. We're not that strong, but we will probably be strong enough. We can immediately hit here with a big stack of genies. Uh, the rest of them can either retreat or buff, depending on their current position. So far, no luck, no morale. That's pretty unfortunate. We can buff again, that's a cure. Mm, a cure is okay. I don't really want to get hit by this one, and also this one will be able to bait uh, some of the stacks back, which is pretty powerful. The fact that they took retaliation off of me is pretty bad. We want to be do giving more and more damage to the Vibrance. I could bait with Angel right now, but I feel like in order to save the, uh, the Vibrance right now, I should be hitting alongside them. And this is the part where we can start getting a little bit tricky. We should be able to kite them, at least somewhat efficiently. Like this, we split them, and they also go for the Master Dinis rather than for the Angels, which is wonderful. Then we can hit here. We can finish off this stack. We have another buff, then we hit, and we hit, and we're good to go. Ended up losing three Master Dinis, and Pathfinding lets me chain the army out easier as well. So that's a wonderful gain as well. Four Angels is one hell of an army already, supported by some Vibrants as well. We have some Master Dinis still. Uh, things are looking up for us right now. I'm pretty happy with the pace that we're finally starting to accumulate power. So right now, as planned, we get the army back over to Shiva, and then Shiva, with the four angels, the vibrance, and the master genies, can then start pushing into the experimental workshops. So let's go ahead and do or just that. The plan right now, I mean, it would have been really, really good to buy the Cloud Temple in the main, but we di didn't accumulate enough gold to do so, because most of the gold ended up being used for the sake of the chains and also the lamps. Um, that's why titans fell out of favor in Jeebus Cross, and that's why lamps are usually the way to go. Because they bring a lot of tempo to your kingdom. So, with that in mind, we're going to be going for the aces now. Aces have been dealt with without any losses. I expected good results, but that's actually even better than I expected. Uh, very nice. We're able to collect resources and scout out the rest of the side. Ooh. Now that's interesting. Another conservatory. My break is really, really hard, so I might want to do this before I actually end up breaking. But we'll see. This seems like a pretty bad dead end. We could also almost collect uh, the um, Elixir of Life too, right? A single black market could get me there, possibly. Oh wait, actually I didn't realize that I have another concert here too. And the uh, Relic type artifact. I passed by the Shiva there. Oh yeah, when I poor man, I scouted out new zones and I didn't really, um, you know, analyze them. Then let us go. It's a tier 3 that's really, really a preferable size. It's one that I can take and one that is actually really rewarding to take at the same time. So a pretty good, um, metal. Hit with the Angels, and hit with the Vibrants. The reason we buff the Vibrants instead of the Angels is because the Angels don't benefit from the buffs as much as the Vibrants. Because something like a Bless would actually do nothing for the Angels. Meanwhile, it's very impactful for the Vibrants. So I've actually meant mostly for the Bless. Actually, we want to buff the Angels somewhat as well. There comes the bless. 
Unfortunate. On this turn, I feel like I should wait and lay. I'll be losing one, possibly two Master Genius. Yep, two. But now, before the um, Golems get to go again for a proper turn, we'll be able to slay most of them. You can slay this one, you can slay these two, slay these six, and slay these five. The go end up with trying to kill another genie, but they are not successful. For the small loss of two Master Genies, we are able to claim three giants to our army. Very good. So right now there's only one decent objective left to handle. But then again, I'm thinking maybe that I should do it on the side hero and get my Shiva going to the break already. But then again, I feel like I will actually end up trying to chain one of the other conservatories available. And because of that, my break is going to be at the earliest at 1-2-2 two, two timing. With that in mind, I have some time to actually take the other fight on the Shiva as well. And if I do that, then I also need some sick chains to be set up right now. And I think I'll be chaining through the Salmir and through the Sanya. That's gonna be the direction that I'll take it at. Uh, because I'm looking to make some pretty heavy chains, I'll be buying the last of the marketplaces so I can then trade away my resources in order to support these chains happening. So, what what is happening is that I really want another hero coming out from the main town. That's gotta be Delina. She has really good moves and gives me some my kingdom, some income as well. Really, really wonderful. We'll get our Shiva to be fast on the Master Genie. And then I'll set her up. And then after I do this fight, I'm going to take away the army from a side hero and then pour Manzer into the list of warriors. Like this, we will then be able to chain the army over to Solmir and then get it, uh, get it to Sanya. Sanya will then push for the Conservatory. And after I find the conservatory, I will be strong enough in order to break open the black dragons and get inside of the desert. Unless both the objectives are really small. In that case, I would be looking to set up a chain over to the last of the objectives that we have in the biome. Which is going to be the conservatory and the dragon scale armor. But hopefully, I'm not pushed to that, um, to that plan. This should be connecting. And I feel like I need another hero to connect over to the Soul Mirror. Yes, yes, I need definitely I need another hero here. One of the heroes is going to be used to take the army off the Soul Mirror from the shop. I mean, off the Shiva from the shop, sorry. And then the other hero is going to be used to get the army all the way to Soul Mirror. So two heroes are needed to support the Shiva taking the uh, experimental workshop. There we go. This is about fine. New turn begins, and new week begins. We have some extra army to be gained if we want that. So far, we don't want that. Well, not that we don't want that, it's just that we don't really care about that. I thought we should be leaving a message in here. We should be moving as far as possible on the Shiva, and only then passing by the army. She's exceptionally good at supporting my Shiva in such a way because she has the pathfinding as well. Worth noting. We can take on the Horned Demons. Some more experience for our Shiva will definitely not get in the way. No need to cast. Oh, okay, I can. It is, in fact, a minimum object. That is uh, pretty upsetting. I could have taken the maximum, but, you know, things are not always ideal. We're gonna be taking a Master Genie for the sake of the Spormance. That is a little bit sad because I'm, well, yeah, just wasting this unit. But this is the only way that I can Spormance without suffering through the terrain penalty. Next up is, as planned, we get the army over to Solmir. 
Then we get it over to Sania. And then Sania pushes for the conservatory. It's fine if she doesn't get it the this turn immediately. As long as the chain connects backwards, we're gonna be good to go. And Sephiroth is gonna be a little bit overkilling. That will make for that will make up for any movement points that the other heroes are missing in the chain as well. So because of the um, because of the sizes of the objects, I feel like I'm only going to be able to break full moves one, two, three. Which is not entirely exciting. However, we'll have to be good enough. With that in mind, we're going to be setting up a, ch a good, good chain to push into the conservatory over here. I could go through the road uh, uh, on the gogs that will let me dig the dragon scale and then pull the army out through the conservatory. We don't really have a good pathfinder. And, uh, okay, so we're going to be connecting the army through Josephine. Josephine should be about 1500 moves away. Then, the army will then go over to Sorug. And Sorg is going to be the one pushing forward. As a hero with offense and some stats, she's going to be the best hero that I have available for the job. Um, apart from that, what's left is the poor man Zashiva. Uh, we get the Shiva back in town. We can give her um, Master Genie to make her faster. And she can start heading for the break. She will be placed at full moves at the break. And she will be waiting for the army to be, to be passed to her in order to be able to break. So, there we go. With this in mind, there is nothing much left to be done. We can pick up a few resources with the heroes that have moves available. Uh, she is connecting all the way over here. And Gerwolf will be escorting the army as well to prevent terrain penalty from, you know, being very, very painful. It's still gonna be very, very painful. But hopefully, not too painful. If I have a hero that's not doing much, there's also something extra that I could do. I'm thinking that I could set up a hero to go here in order to start, you know, to have someone that's gonna be fetching the army already. That'll make things easier. But no, I don't have any hero that's not useful right now. So, we'll go like this. Hopefully the concept is something like tier 3. It is, in fact, a minimum. <laughs> that is very unfortunate. There's not a lot of army in the biome. Mm, the chain here connects, um... Not, like, exceptionally well, but it's gonna be good enough. With this, we can delete some of the heroes in order to open up some of the hero slots that we'll be using to complete the chain. Uh, chain the lowerly out. We can delete some of the lesser good hero. We can get Ignatius for some extra army. That seems very fine. We did override our tower. Starting army down. Can get her inside, then we can get the income hero over the necromancer. Excuse me. With this in mind, with all this, we can then chain the army over to Josephine. And as planned, we get it over to Gerwolf that will be managing the armies of penalty evermore. For the gogs, all we need is the giants, so the sword doesn't have to start suffering the terrain penalty quite yet. We want her to not have the non-snow units for as long as possible, and that's why the Gerald is here to drag the army for her. He's not able to do it for much more. By that point, the army will have to inevitably go over to the Sorug, and that time is now. There we go. We also should make Gerbil faster by giving him a Master Genie. Because his moon points will be really, really important for me. And then by doing the War Unicorns here, we will be able to claim. That's a good auto. Losing him is a pretty good thing. I mean, we don't prefer losing them. We try to keep them. But then again, out of all the things that we could lose, they are the things that we are the least sad to lose. Sorug is setting up for the break. Now we have Sora at the break, ready to brawl the black dragons. 
All we need now is to receive our Arties and the rest of the army. Hopefully the Conservator is gonna be pretty big, otherwise the break is gonna be really, really tough and close. I wonder if I should have a hero over there, or whether this will be good enough to pull the army out. I feel like this is good enough to pull the army out, but Jerwolf will actually have to be the hero pushing forward. No, 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 I need another hero. There has to be another one, otherwise the army is gonna be getting stuck there. Uh, these calls are not very easy to make. You kind of just have to have base it off of experience. Our resources are dwindling, but we are able to support this just a tiny little bit more. Which I think is exactly what we need. There we go. Then with this, we are passing over to 1, 2, 3. We will take the army now. All of it. Except for a Master Genie. So she doesn't have to suffer the Turing penalty for taking the army. It is at least not a minimum so far. It is either uh, it's tier 3 to 5, right? Tier 3 to 4. <laughs> Jesus, tier 5 counts, huh? Marcus. It is tier 2, unfortunately, so it's still rather small. But by farming this many objects, we are still don't have a good amount of army anyway. Have some haste, they're not very useful, but that'll do. They will not be able to kill a giant, and we'll be able to finish off the rest of them. Please give me a Pathfinder level up. No, and no. Unfortunate. Then, we are going to be dragging the army back. We'll go with Josephine first because she has an, uh, a snow unit. Unlike the other hero. Now, we should be grabbing another hero from the tavern over here. That will drag the army the rest of the way back. Well, at least help with that. Take it on Caitlyn. Take it back. Couldn't get Ignatius to go and pull it to the crossroad. At this point, Lena can just uh, collect some resources to be able to afford the last zero that I'll need to get collect, connect the army over to Shiva. Uh, trade away. Trade away. And trade away. We have a cannon now. That's pretty cool. It's not that useful, but it's a nice little fine addition. So with this, 10 Vibrants, 7 Angels, a few Master Genies, and a few Giants. Um, this is what we managed to collect on 1, 2, 3 in this volume. And also we have our 15, 14 Shiva. That's pretty good. Mm. With this, we will be brawling down the Black Dragons and accessing the desert. The other combat doesn't seem to have a problem with them, but we can take the fight ourselves. It seems like a fun fight to take. <laughs> Make sure that we don't get breath. Apart from that, there's not much that we need to do. We can take the retail on the Angel immediately by attacking. And we could also... No, no, we just sit here like this. Ooh. We can head again. Uh, let's hit a new stack that will be followed up with a hit from the Vibrance as well. I guess we're able to take on a few. We're able to hit on the Angel again. Hit. Hit. And hit. We managed to save 8 Vibrance over the auto combat. And then Pathfinding would uh, lead me to be able to find the Desert better. Interference would lead me to take the Final Flight better. Uh, because I'm breaking late, I would be expecting the opponent to already be here. And, you know, that I'll be taking the final fight in any moment now. So for that reason, I would be taking interference if I was playing a real match. And in a real match, this break wouldn't be that competitive. Probably good enough to win um, matches up to 300 rating about. Because the hero is pretty good, the army is pretty decent. And we're able to farm immediately. Um, but, you know, in higher ratings, this would be um, somewhat weak. I feel like we did pretty well with our biome. 
and it will still be a very nice example of what to do when you buy him, you know, it doesn't really have that obvious of a path. And, you know, you have a big break and you don't really have an ideal hero either. The game ended up being interesting enough. We're able to clear for the desert. The moment that we would get control magic, we would be able to go for the teapot. The middle is Necropolis. Our wisdom gives us re really good vision of what there actually is to be found here. So that's pretty cool too. Split the uh, angels for the sake of the range guard. We are able to take the mansion if we want to. Do we have? No, we don't have haste. So this is actually not a very good way we can deal with the mansion. Well, actually, we could still deal with it. We are currently looking for lots of artifacts, so... This would be a decent enough idea. Overfirmament, not exactly the ideal item, but it would still be good enough. Oh, look at that. A middle with many experimental workshops. Experimental workshops are the kind of object we, that we would like to see because that would lead into us having... Um, you know, it would emphasize the currently existing power stack already. I could probably take some wood off of the biome somewhere. Yeah, like this. So no need to trade. And we're gonna be playing a little bit of the stern to, to show you that the assignment would be perfectly sufficient to farm the entire desert and to get you into god mode. And with that, that will conclude my tower episode. Uh, most usually you would be rolling like a few more lamps or maybe a few more pickets, um, or maybe earth magic or maybe not that bad of a break. Any of these outcomes would make the game a far, far easier for you. We can also use Brissov with Expert Haste to take this fight as well. This will be easy by this point. Then we can grab a different hero to take the rest of the shops. Very nice. The heroes are nice and strong, they feel pretty good to use. And then we're able to claim the um, the Earth Town, and then we are pretty strong. By that point, all we need we all we would need is a few stats and we're good to go. Um so yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll be following up with the other uh, factions episodes uh, later as well. And I might be going over the different strategies for the factions as well. Um, right now, I focus really, really heavily on the Might version of Tower gameplay. Of course, you could go for the Magic version as well. This might be better in some scenarios, might be worse in others. Um, the reason I went for Might this game is because we didn't really have any artists to support casting, and we also had a Black Dragon break, of course. But you know, makes things a little bit difficult. The way to deal with a Black Dragon break as a caster would be, of course, to go for the um, you would be looking to get the um, resurrection and spam it on your power stock then the earth tone fight is pretty easy and after we get the earth tone we get uh, we ascend into godhood of course this fight is gonna be a little bit costly in terms of army But then again, for an F thumb, it's probably worth it. We also managed to build a good support and so on. So, I hope you enjoyed watching. This was actually a pretty tough game. This buy-in didn't offer too much. Most of the things were off-road. We didn't have many good artists to begin with. Our hero didn't roll the perfect skills or anything like that. And the bank sizes were also uh, pretty sad. So, with that in mind, I think we did a pretty good job considering the uh, circumstances. I hope you guys enjoyed the watch, and I'll see you at the next episode. Till next time. And also, check out my Twitch. I stream pretty much every day. So you can learn something over there as well, if you would like. 